What's up, guys? We're here. I know there's a little bit of delay. He always gives me a second to kind of um, adjust to this, but this is the first time that I've, I'm doing a live in person with my guests. So uh, we have one mic. I'm going to be moving it around um, as we take questions and kind of each person shares their expertise and their experience. And so just want to welcome you guys to the channel. If you're brand new, uh, welcome. Thanks so much. Um, I love all sorts of fishing. Um, most of you guys might know me from surf fishing, but you know, I love inshore, offshore, you know, yelltail, tuna. Um, and then trout game is something that I used to do when I was a lot younger, um, when I was a kid. And then I kind of fell off. That's kind of when I stopped fishing. I, I was fishing until maybe around high school and I kind of fell off of it. So, um, so yeah, just, uh, trout fishing about, I think, Three years ago, that's when we started. Yeah, that, yeah. that's when we really got taken that year. Three years ago, um, I was, you know, I, you know, obviously Rodney, Rodney Marquez is a friend of mine, and um, his was a channel that I was watching. Great, my son just came home and opened the garage door. <laughs> what's up, Gav? Hey, what's up? <laughs> um, so I forgot to text you. Um. <laughs> But yeah, I was right. And it turns out, you know, like um, Alfredo, we'll talk, we'll, Alfredo will talk more um, in a little bit. But, you know, Alfredo's, you know, when he was younger, I think probably was raised under the school of Rodney Marquez in terms of this, just that influence, you know? Literally, Rodney Marquez was like the one main YouTuber. He had all the videos that you made. You learned SoCal Fishing. Yeah. yeah. SoCal Fishing. Yep, that Rodney was him. Marquez. That was him. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, um, but I saw Rodney mini jigging and I saw a lot of people mini jigging and I was like, Man, that looks that looks really fun. I, I want to try that. And so I went to Irvine Regional Park three years ago on my own, um, having very little. I, I called Rodney. I said, Rodney, what ounce head do I need uh, for throwing the mini jig? And he said, 132nd. I said, OK, what color? He said, oh, you know, yellow and white's good. OK, so I bought a pack of yellow and white from Young's Tackle, um, like 10 minutes from my house. They moved, I think, though. Yep, Bellflower now. Yeah. Yep. And so. Um, yeah, and then that day, just, I just ended up doing pretty well. I limited pretty fast, and they were all like two, three pounders, yeah. I think. Yeah, um, that was the yeah. first year Black Canyon. That, that was the first good year, big fish. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, big, big fish in Montana, yeah. yeah, and I was like, number one, I was like, man, this is easy, and, and this is so much fun. And I was like, this is so easy. Turns out it's not, it's not as easy as that, that first time. It was <laughs> just I just got lucky that day totally. And I also learned uh, another thing was uh, that day was I suck at fighting fish. Um, I was using, you know, I, I'm mostly surf fishing with a little bit heavier gear and I was on two pound Iser with the mini jigs. And so I had the drag like totally. So if you look at that video from Irvine, like I'm like reeling against the drag the whole time and, and doing all sorts of silly stuff. Uh, but turns out Alfredo, were you there? Were you there? I was there. He was there. Yeah, I, I wasn't there. Yeah. Was yeah. the next yeah. Yeah. So, so it turns out Alfredo, Alfredo was at, um, that Irvine park that day and they, they saw the video and they're like, Hey, you know, and they, they kind of remember me from that. And uh, these guys are um, excellent, excellent fishermen. And uh, since that day, we've fished together multiple times. And um, I've learned so much from them, which is why I wanted them to join. But I um, want to welcome you guys so much. Oh, Christian's here. Um, hey, yo. <laughs> Christian at work, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, so what I'm going to do, um, welcome. I haven't gotten to the chats. I see all your comments, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, Gerard, thank you so much. Um, Tim. <laughs> Tim, Tim Pham, love yeah, you, brother. Yeah, what's up? What's up <laughs> We're stoked that you're here. Greg Sato, man, happy new year. Um, Eduardo Lopez, I don't know if I've seen you in, in um, one of my lives before, so welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, Brian Pondo, what's up, man? It's just Don. What's up, brother? Welcome. Thanks so much for uh, the comment. Uh, Big Lot Fishing, Josh Bailey in the house, man. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Samuel Balderas, man. I always say, it, I'm going to say every time I see you on my comments, guys, is uh, Samuel was, I think, literally one of the first follows that I got from Instagram when I first started my Instagram, when I was like, oh, I got to grow things. And um, But um, Samuel, um, awesome dude, man. Thank you so much for your support over these past few years now. It's crazy to think. Um, Christian, welcome, brother. Um, addicted to fishing. Uh, you have to catch a trout on the Lucky Craft 110 for legendary Benji status. That, that's, the that's the next step. Right? On the 110. 110 let's, oh do my God. let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to try it. <laughs> New challenge. Uh, James E. Is that your boy? Yeah, two. I was Eddie, uh, Eduardo Lopez. And then all right. Hey. Oh, all right. 
Hey, all the friends um, that came through the live because of Appreciate Alfredo it. and Jordan, um, thank you so much for joining, and uh, thank you for the support. Uh, Dale Flanders, welcome. It is what it is. What's up, Todd? Happy New Year, man. Hope you're doing well, brother. All right, so I'm going to pass the mic over um, to these guys. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. I think I'll lead it off with um, just telling us about uh, when you first started fishing and just you know how you came to love fishing and your fishing experience. Um, you can kind of... You can just kind of uh, riff uh, however you want, yeah, gotcha. you know, right. a minute or two for however long you want. And then um, as you guys, I'll try to respond in the comments. All right. So uh, Jordan um, is a friend of mine. Uh, so before Jordan talks, because he's going to be way too humble. <laughs> no, I, is, no, but Alfredo's I'm not that good. Man. Alfredo's got my back here. So Alfredo, if I'm lying, Alfredo, tell me if I'm telling the truth. Alfredo, tell me. Jordan, Jordan is one of the most knowledgeable fishermen I've ever met. Um, personally, it, bro. I'm not yeah, it. he's no, it's just years of experience. Um, just, that's it. but yeah, he he really is in terms of the knowledge and just being able to communicate that um, is almost, in my opinion, like a savant. You know, it's really what he's gifted with. Um, it's his gift. And so um, Jordan works currently for Daiwa. Yeah, I do work for Daiwa. If you've called in, you've probably talked to me once or twice before. So yeah. just uh, letting that out there. So And uh, ex and just an excellent trout fisherman, but an excellent uh, fisherman, period. So just uh, hand the mic over to Jordan. Let him introduce himself, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, guys? All right. So I'm Jordan. Uh, so I've been fishing since I was probably about five or six years old. I'm 23 now. Uh, like a lot of people, dad got me into it. I uh, used to be into baseball and everything like that when I was a kid. Got asthma, so that was kind of out of the picture. But, uh, hey, my dad got me into fishing, so it took me to a Mount Baldy trout pond, and all of a sudden, dude, I, I found the love of – I found my passion in my life, dude. It was the greatest thing I could probably ever ask for. So ever since then, I've just been going and trying to find everything. Started off with trout, went to catfish, went to bluegill and everything else. Then I got into bass fishing. Now I'm starting to get into saltwater, uh, you know, so it's just – it's been a total journey for me just to try to learn all these new techniques and get into it. So for the most part, you know, it's just been just a humbling experience just to learn all these fishing things. Lots of skunks, but a lot, a lot of good days too. A lot of really good days. So, yeah, so I'll pass the mic on. Are you sure that exists with Jordan a skunk or not? <laughs> <laughs> I have my good days. I am. I'm very, I'm very happy that I'm having my good days. Got a bunch of time in though. It's definitely good. Um, also, are you guys able to uh, just, if anyone can give me a mic and video check, I forgot to do that in the beginning. Uh, how's the audio? Making yeah. sure that you guys can hear everything. And I'm going to ask Jordan actually one more question. Uh, Jordan, what's the, uh, what's, what's your greatest fishing day ever? If you could think of one. And number two, uh, what's the biggest trout you've ever caught? Okay. Biggest trout I ever caught was like seven pound, three ounce. Nothing. I haven't hit the 10 pound mark yet, but hopefully soon um best day was 104 at silverwood that i actually you know counted the next best day was the next day after that after silver was 98 so i missed it by this much but i was so hungry uh i, I had to go home man so, are, you, are you talking about 104 casts or 104 fish <laughs> 104 fish, <laughs> 104 fish man. Yeah, definitely 104 fish but it was uh yeah that was probably my best trout day so far that i counted had a lot of good days you know 20 30 40 fish days uh but, you know, just all catch and release, just all having fun. So best day was, yeah, definitely Silverwood. Dude. Yeah, man. That's, that's, I, I have yet to have a triple digit trout fish day. Soon. Soon. But just, um, I, I'm getting a little better. I, I'm, I'm oh, getting, getting a little bit more consistent. So, um, but that's, that's crazy, guys. And that's, that's honestly what I found to, what I found so, what I love about trout fishing so much is when I first went, I used to keep the trout um and just try to catch my limit and when i caught my limit i would be like super happy oh i caught my limit um and then i take them home and i'm like man i don't want to clean this fish and like <laughs> yeah that was that's, that's I was like what, i don't do that yeah, yeah. And, but now i realize like man when we fish these stock like stock ponds um we're not for me personally not yet anyways i'm not even trying to catch big fish i just want to feel that i want to work my lure in and want to know that i'm doing it in a good way and getting better and then just have something bite it uh, over and over as many times as possible and triple digit fish days are possible yeah they definitely are possible especially yeah. at the lakes around us guys you guys just got to put the time and effort and trust me it will happen eventually you'll get those really good days that you can't believe yeah so um i'm gonna hand it over to alfredo we're just doing introductions right now guys and then we're gonna jump into techniques and gear and any questions you guys might have all right so alfredo what's up so i'm alfredo guys i mean i've been fishing this orange county era maybe the last like good 15 years or so I first started off, my dad always took me fishing as like when I was younger. 
Sorrow was maybe one of the first places yeah. I started. Sorrow and a really good Huckleberry, you know, Huckleberry, Huckleberry yeah. Bond, like, There was always Huckleberry. pictures of me maybe like three or four years old where there's like my dad's helping me like reel in the fish. And then I eventually started at uh, Irvine Park, maybe around the ages of seven with my dad. That's right. And then we found out about a local pond called Eisenhower and Orange. That was really good fishing back then too. And from there on, I started bass fishing, got into like bluegill bass, catfish, and then a few years back, I got into the trout with at a local the Irvine Park Derby. Mm -hmm. And I I might probably there's probably some people in here that remember those derbies for sure. And then that year after the derby, we had a uh, I had started mainly trout fishing, and then that's when I ran into you guys because I I'm actually four years into the trout game. Okay, three four years into the trout game now, but I mean I've been fishing my whole life. Yeah, like, that, that's always like been one thing I've always stuck with. Yeah. Probably won't stop fishing <laughs> yeah. at this point. Actually, I think one of the reasons why I feel bonded to Alfredo is our fishing stories kind of inter intersect a little bit because um, I grew up in the city of Orange and Irvine Regional Park is where, and I've said it before in many videos, Irvine Regional Park is where I first started fishing when I was about seven years old. Uh, the only difference is Alfredo's 19 and I'm, <laughs> and I'm 45. So just, and, but so we're generations apart. So I was fishing Irvine Park, I think before he was born. Um, <laughs> before, literally before he was born. But it's, it was so cool uh, running it, meeting Alfredo at Irvine Park and knowing that's kind of where he started fishing too, um, just generations apart. And it's so cool to just see that game still there, you know? Yeah, and it's crazy because that lake has, it hasn't changed much. But the technique, as in what you have to fish there now, is completely different from what it was five. It's years probably ago. way harder. Pressure, and yeah. All yeah. Pressure and yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, all the he's probably in the vid like watching the video. Uh, Timothy, mm -hmm. I met Timothy at Irvine Park, and that's yeah. maybe eight years ago. Yeah, yeah. And we were just like starting the bass, like right. the bass scene and stuff. Yeah. But that's always been a it's huge. Got a lot harder. Pressure, that. pressure killed all the lakes, but you right. gotta, just got to adapt. It's all about that. adapt, right. and then always throw that new bait because if the fish haven't seen it, they're gonna be curious about it. They're gonna. Eventually, you're going to have to bite and see it one or two times. Yeah. Alfredo, uh, your best fishing day ever and your biggest trout. Biggest trout was nine pounds. And that was actually last season at Arrowhead. Yeah. Mm. I was actually with my boy, Mark. We were uh, we were both fishing spoons at, for brown trout. And uh, he had seen a two or three maybe in that nine to ten pound range. And they chased the spoon in. I went in there, like, slide the jig in there. And next thing you know, they just... <laughs> big thump and it was just like all right game on right there <laughs> and then th that was my personal best and my best fishing date honestly has to be the day we were all at Irvine Park oh that was a good jig. we must have had 50 plus each, each. 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 like we yeah. lost count like and even yeah. in that video we were like oh it's a small one and then just like yeah, yeah, that was, that was that, was those days were really good and then our past trip at Silverwood Someone that was, was good. That was yeah, yeah we each had 40 to 50 pounds. Oh, we're all there well. too. <laughs> yeah, we, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, all so all three of us were there again. Yeah. But yeah, you, guys, was, you guys had good days. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, we found more. Yeah. 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 Just that. Yeah. 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 For sure, that Irvine Park day, for sure. And then my personal best being that. Yeah, those were both for sure. fantastic days. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Good stuff. Um, Let's see. Let's catch up to some comments yeah. here. Any questions? Um, Oh, and, and also um, another reason why I'm. <laughs> oh, Alfredo Senior. Poachers, man. Those guys are poachers. Poach with us. <laughs> You're part of it. You are part of it. You know who you are. <laughs> um, oh, Gerard. Gerard met Alfredo last Friday at Prado. Yeah. Yeah, I just met. I met. I've seen Gerard at many parties. How yeah. you doing, man? What's going on? Yeah, raging to fish on Instagram. Yep. Um, he's everywhere. Super positive, humble. Um, and you're a slayer, man. You always call yourself a new fisherman, but uh, yeah, you, you, he's better than new, man. Trust yeah, yeah. Me. You, he's out fishing multiple times. Yeah, so, yeah, trust yeah. Me. I'll, I'll fish me on the boat when I went with you on the overnight. <laughs> so um, you're not new, bro. Stop being humble. No, stop being <laughs> humble. <laughs> Give yourself pat on the back there. Um, but brothers, uh, so my friends, uh, the reason why I'm another reason why I'm doing this, and I don't know if they know this, is um, Alf, uh, Jordan. How old are you? 23. Jordan's 23. Alfredo's 19. Um, I'm 45, and for me, like. It's already past my time in some ways, guys. I mean, I'm just getting started, you know, with my dreams and my passion. But uh, this is this is a this is like this is generation them, you know, and this is generation now. And so for me, I believe in anything that we're doing. We should, as we're doing it and striving to be better at whatever you're doing, um, it doesn't have to be fishing. Uh, part of the vision should be to be passing it down, you know, and and not that I'm passing anything down to them because I'm not, but um, I have this platform um of youtube of just you guys watching and and being you know sharing the stoke with fishing and i i really want them here because to me like one thing that i i have trust issues guys just letting you know a little bit of my psychology i have trust issues 
Um, there have been times where I've had relationships go bad in my life. Um, and that's an ongoing like narrative in my life. So I have trust issues. So when I met these guys, um, again, just very cautiously, um, I really appreciate them. And they, they're just good people. Uh, good people. Um, and, you know, we're all human at the end of the day. So I'm not claiming anyone, including myself, to be perfect. But uh, they're positive people. They're fishing for the right reasons. And they're doing it for the right reasons. And so I just want to encourage you guys, all, uh, not just through this time, but through our friendship and just fishing together, um, to continue doing that. Um, Share the stoke, man. That's all it's about. Yeah. Sharing the stoke is what it's at. It's always a better day. I'd rather help somebody catch fish. Yeah. Rather than myself, it's not fun when you're catching day. all the fish. Nobody yeah, else, exactly. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. even like, like the derby, we're at the was it the El Dorado? Yeah, it was a kids were, event, and yeah, you're helping them. Get and I, I mean, I probably had 50 fish that day, and I was like, I was just handing off the rod to the kids, you know, because I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, these kids came out thinking they were gonna catch fish, and then it's raining cold, yeah, and, and I'm like, man, these guys are just like sitting there power weight, so I was just. Yeah. Hooking and handing off the rods to everybody. So yeah. just so the kids, you know, have that yeah. stoke as well. You know, it's about sharing the stoke. No yeah. matter what, at the end, it's always about sharing. It's not fun catching all the fish yourself. In yeah. the end, it's just it's good to catch some fish, but if everybody's catching fish around you having fun, it's just way better ambiance, way better just surround. That's the cool thing with or like our SoCal scene. Usually when we're fishing these ponds, it's always the same group of people. Yeah. It's always the same people, like everybody knows each other. It's like we, we all know we're going to see each other at the lakes Wednesdays and Thursdays. Yeah, during the so. pandemic, we saw each other all the pandemic, time. Pandemic, it was we were like three, three times a week. Three we times, four like, times a week. We, they see you next week after every then, trip. We knew. It, it's like that. Even now, like the groups of fishermen that there is now, like there's always the fly guys that fish one section of the lake and then the other guys are always fishing. So it's always like a good group of people that are always out there yeah. in the South yeah. Yeah. sure. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, I'm newer to the, to the trout scene. And so, you know, like for me, it's like, I just want to number one just fit in um and uh at all the ponds that i've ever fished with everyone it's, it's always been a positive time you know and so i think just keeping it that way fight fighting for that you know to keep yeah. it positive yeah. and, and for you guys too like the longer you fish and the older you get um the higher the chances of you running into stuff that affects you you know like you might you might like play it off but it leaves a mark in your heart it, it you does know? happen unfortunately yeah but that's just part of the game and you've already dealt yeah. with that you know yeah i've dealt with the negativity before yeah. and it's not always the greatest thing but you got to learn to live with it sometimes and you just kind of got to learn to go past it yeah you got to realize what you're out there for yeah, so, yeah. Know, for catching exactly. fish enjoying the enjoying the friendship even if i don't catch fish yeah. i might be with these guys just messing around you know just eating chilling just relaxing on the bank yeah that's what it's about you know people don't realize i think fishing's like second part of it man it's right catching fish is the second part of it it's it's fishing's about camaraderie i yeah. think in the end so, and and yeah and it's there too you it's know therapy too. yeah so it's always a good day being out there but especially yeah our oc crew they know yeah. who they are but going out there relaxing sure. on the bench just chilling that's it's the best it, part man. i don't care if i get to fish or not sometimes you know it's, yeah. it's just fun yeah going out there shoot um don't uh sorry sorry to cut oh, you no, off no. uh dan says i broke alfredo's fishing rod once. <laughs> <laughs> did you get him a new one at least you off the hook you got a hook you off the hook <laughs> um yeah tim rancho was a prime example of that yeah absolutely um okay guys uh sorry i i always get like i start waxing philosophical and then that's not really why you're here um you guys okay, you, we want to talk about tips and tricks so i'm actually gonna uh change seats um a little bit over to the left and uh we're gonna start some, we're gonna start easy and then we're gonna move so i'm gonna do a small set i'm gonna and these guys are gonna do most of the talking in terms of their tips and i'll jump in here and there um we'll start off with talking about power bait um, for bait and weight guys and uh, you never know who's watching and if and if you're just starting out it might be the best way to start uh, like when you just start getting out there so we'll start with power bait um, just some tips and tricks and some things to keep in mind and then we'll move to mini jigs um, obviously mini jigs spoons and then maybe some other stuff drop shot, yeah, drop shot uh, minnows, drop minnows minnows yeah we'll throw some um, other stuff in there about and, that. Okay. I wanted Alfredo brought back a technique that I've been meaning to actually make a video on for a long time. And he, he had it and I was like, Oh shoot, that thing's money. <laughs> and, 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 and so he gets the job done. Yeah. He saw that. And so we'll talk about a, a very old school technique when no one's trying to reinvent the wheel here, but we don't talk, we don't actually see it a lot um, at the ponds. So we'll, we'll give Alfredo a chance to talk about that later in the video. Um, Francis, um, we were hoping Irvine would get stocked, uh, but no, not today. I, I think they're probably. Yeah, I, I think Friday. they're gonna Tomorrow stop Friday, like Saturday or Sunday. No. <laughs> yeah, 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 good luck. Next week. Next week. Next, yeah, week, next, week, next week. Good luck, guys. No, they didn't stop today, no. so it's got to be this right. week. It's so. tomorrow or Friday, yeah. but 
you guys will get the fish. <laughs> you guys will see it online eventually. Yeah. Way to do it is, is get out there and fish. Yep. You know, you, you got to look for that bite. Yeah. That bite. If you look for that bite, you're going to get rewarded with it. It's what All right. People too. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the, with, oh, with Jordan okay. here. Switch. And uh, um, let's talk about power bait to start. Um, just real, real basics of uh, rigging. Uh, how to rig, and uh, and then just go from there. In the meantime, ask any questions. We'll try to get to them, all right? So let me switch right. over. You can jump in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got this. All right, guys. First time on YouTube, so give me a break if I'm not really great at it. But All right, so power bait. Power bait's a very basic technique for the most part, but it's going to be probably your most essential technique at most of the park uh, It's it, If the fish aren't biting, sometimes they want a little tiny piece of power bait, especially, you know, Santa Ana River Lakes, Irvine Lake, Irvine Regional, all the lakes around oh, us. Works. So what we recommend always is either if it's a shallow lake and it's really small, you can always get around with a split shot. So split shot, for those who don't know, I'm pretty sure. Get some out of here. Maybe be a little pinch on weight about that big. All right. So that is usually when you pinch that on the line on about, you know, two to four pound test. It really depends on whatever preference line you have. I personally throw four uh, fluorocarbon. But you pinch that on, you do it about a 16 to 18 inch liter, depending on the depth. And you put a small little owner hook, you know, anywhere 14, from 10 to 14, 14. Yeah, 10s to 14s work. I'll even go up to eight sometimes, depending on if I'm throwing some bigger bait. But usually 10s to 14s will do better so they can kind of get the uh, – get the hook bait down their throats so yeah and then with especially with power bait fishing depending how exactly preference how people fish it you can do the split shot way mm -hmm. or you can just do the classic you know x sinker way with carolina you know, weight carolina yeah. weight so Maybe. carolina rig is another good one at Santa river lakes that's my top like way to fish power bait but if they're out farther in closer you can kind of cast in front of you exactly. or you can flick it out a mile and when they take the line, they won't feel it because the line goes through that barrel sinker. So that always helps as well. And then especially with bait and weight, that's almost like a, a trusty way to go. If the bite's slow and you need something to spark a bite or have these fish attack something, the power bait is probably one big key yeah. to have in your Especially mouth. with trout. If they eat one bait and one, one fish sees one bit fishy to bait, they all get like territorial. They all start going off. So I've, I've noticed that. I've yeah. actually noticed when yeah. one person gets bit, um, almost always another person gets always, bit. Always yeah. So it happens all the time. Another thing you can do is Carolina Keeper. Same thing. You don't have to use a swivel and a bead or anything. You can use a Carolina Keeper. I personally use a swivel because I've had these slide down the line. So you just got to always make sure to crimp them on really well. But this is good because you can change your leader length in any second. So if you're fishing in front of you or it's murky water, throw a little tiny six inch leader, four or five, six inch leader. Usually I throw the 12 to 16. Or yeah, 12, 12 to 16. 16. Yeah. Usually gets the job done. And then the weight, of course, is always a big key. And yeah. then distance, you know, yeah. always finding always finding that spot where these trout are at is one key and then keeping it in their area yeah. where they're setting out in the water column is another big one. Because sometimes you can have your power bait too low and those fish are not going to go yeah. down there to get it. Yeah. Or it can be too high for them where you don't even want to move. Yeah, some, sometimes these fish are lazy. If it's not right in front of their nose, they will not even open their mouth or try. They'll look at it, but they won't eat it. And so that's yeah. the benefit with the Carolina Keeper. You're able to adjust your, yeah. your leader yeah. length to what yeah. it is. And then you just pretty much experiment with that every right. time. You guys, I, I was going to jump in and try to be a moderator, but you're answering everything I was going to ask already. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Um, but let, so that's great job, guys. I have a, I do have a question to lead you into the next part, but um, anywhere, so to sum up what uh, Jordan and Alfredo are saying, uh, anywhere from size 10 to size 14 hook, it can be a regular like uh, salmon egg hook yep, salmon or, egg or mosquito, egg, or mosquito trouble. hook or you a trouble. Yeah, you can throw a 12 to 16 trouble. They're real small, trying, you know, even 18s. Yeah. But you, uh, yeah, it's just up to you. But I prefer the owners because these are really nice fine wire hooks. These fish kind of hook themselves a lot of the time. They're so thin that owners are they're just piercing. So it's really nice. And especially if you're, you know, want to catch them and release them in the lip or something, you have a way higher chance to do that with an owner single than a trouble. You know? Yeah. So a small hook, 10 to 14, uh, um, a mosquito hook or a trouble hook. Uh, leader length, what I'm hearing from them uh, varies. So uh, Alfredo hit on something that I was going to jump in on, um, which is water column. So trout can be lower in the water column, or a little higher yeah. in the water column. Uh, and that's part of the fine adju little adjustments that differentiate someone getting bit and not getting bit. Yeah, exactly. So um, that's why, yeah, um, I haven't bait and weighted yet this season, but I picked these up because I am planning on making a video for bait and weight. Right. And uh, this really is one of the things <clears> I'm going to be focusing on is water column. Like where in the water column should your leader be? Um, what about weight size? I know split shot, that's self-explanatory. Sure. Um, if you're Carolina rigging, uh, do you, a quarter ounce, half I ounce? I don't usually eight to quarter. Eight, eight really to quarter yeah, ounce. Eight to depends quarter. on how far they are. And then 
depending on the application you're yeah. going to throw. Lighter, lighter ways you can get away with so they don't feel it, obviously, mm-hmm. but sometimes you can't fight that. So at Santa Ana River Lakes, like, they're out in the middle. Yeah, You got to throw a quarter, sometimes even heavier. Some people, uh, you can throw as much as you want. I just throw quarter of the weights. On our lighter rods, you can kind of get those out a mile with two pounds. You don't really need the heavy weights to weigh you down or anything. So. All right. Um, and then you want to show us some colors, uh, any recommendations on – Power bait colors. I know there's Potsky, there's Power bait, there's all different kinds of dough baits. There's every dough bait. You can every pick which one you want. Personally, you eat the Power bait. Power bait. Yeah, power those, those three are probably like yeah. uh, so go tos. Go to everybody knows is going to be the rainbow. Rainbow garlic, man. Anything with garlic, pretty much for these things, is going to work really well. Uh, they have other flavors as well. You can try cheese. I know a lot of guys try different flavors. These are the three I keep in my bag, and he takes yeah, the same exact the same ones. ones exactly. All right. Second one going to be your good old fashioned green garlic. Good old fashioned, that little light lime green garlic. When you know, ninety nine percent of the time, that'll get it done. But we've noticed, especially at the party place, when they don't want to bite that garlic, or everybody's throwing garlic, this has been a hot ticket. So it's the peach salmon egg. So peach salmon egg is one of those ones. They don't have them everywhere at your local Walmart always, but when you can find it, I'd get a jar. I get a jar. For yeah, sure. that or you can also get the ones with glitter. The ones with glitter works pretty good one. too. And then I don't think we have a jar, but it's the bright green one yeah they make a bright green bright one green with garlic. the yeah. that's the other good one that yeah usually clear water lakes like uh, that one. yeah and then yeah. sometimes it works in murky but clear water has sinkers they can see it right? yeah they see right? it, it's, it's, it's it opposite with those things they don't yeah, yeah they don't need the the dirty the water to see those bright colors exactly. it's clear yeah. they'll, they'll bite it they'll bite it okay awesome so you know just a certain combination with different flavors um you can watch this video back if you want to see the recommendations um can you show us real quick one of you uh, the best way to put the power bait on the hook. Okay, I can do that. Yeah. Because I, um, Mark actually showed me a way that I hadn't thought of before last year. Okay. Um, because normally I just balled it up. Yeah. Made, made a little ball, but he showed me another way. I want to see if you hit so it. So usually the ways I do it, I just make a small ball like this, just enough to do the, just put on the hook. And usually I don't have a hook with me, of course. Um, and usually you just kind of put it on the hook and ball it up. Another way you could do it, and a lot of guys do. A lot of people fish the power worms and stuff like that. We'll get into that later, but you can kind of roll it in your hand when you have it on the hook. Oh, you make a little worm. Sometimes that little worm makes all the difference. If they're looking for some movement, this with a little bit of current will kind of wiggle around in the water, look almost like a little Rapala or something, and that will get the job done. Yeah, that's, worm technique, that, that, that's a key one. That was different. I was at Ralph D. Clark, I think, last year or the year before that, and uh, Mark was like, hey, you can do it like this, and it turned into a little worm. Yeah, I was like, he, hey, he created, that, that he makes sense. It, yeah. You get, yeah, just the ball, they always see it all the time. But they see this worm kind of moving in the current or whatever, even you're moving it, and it'll do the job. Yep. Even another trick to the power bait, sometimes people do is add a, a mealworm to the hook yep. and yep. have the mealworm stick it out, and then uh, they'll have the ball of power bait with the mealworm at the And end. there's guys okay. who put power bait with a you know trout worm. They make their power mouse back in the day, we used to call right. it, before the power worm. My tails used to come out. We made our own. So that was a, that was a hot ticket back in the day. Yeah. So that um, just shows you all these little adjustments. And then that also shows you why a small hook is important because you want that thing to be floating. Yep. So if you're using something like a mealy and your hook's too big, then it might not float as well. Exactly. So. Yeah, you need a really nice light wire. Yeah. Exactly. Wire. And we can go back to the hooks as in like the size 10s to 14s. Owner does make two types depending how big the fish you guys are targeting. Mm-hmm. They make the regular thin wire and then they make the, the, the finesse ones. The okay. super fine wire. The, the, the super fine wire. Super yeah. fine wire ones yeah. that those sometimes even with the lightest pull, they'll, they'll break. Okay. So, but they, they work. They, they work. work so. Yeah, they float the worm. Float Whatever you throw them way better. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. Awesome, awesome. Uh, let's see a little question. Uh, yeah, Brian scent. Pondo. That's uh-huh. a good one. Uh, so scent, you can kind of use whatever scent you really like. There's different ones. They have bite on garlic, bang. Okay. Bang's what I use because I don't have to get my hands dirty. You just spray it. Yeah, uh, it sprays easy, so it's way easier. Um, who else makes one? Bite on garlic. Oh, Smelly Jelly makes a decent one. Smelly Jelly. Smelly and jelly some, I've seen some people put like the hook of bait, like the mermaid's milk. On yeah, the they put the mermaid. Bait, yeah. And then I've also yeah. seen Patsky might have. Patsky uh-huh. makes they, they make a krill one. Power bait makes one. It's just all to preference. Yeah, I think it's just a really good option to use when there's a lot of people around you because it's kind of like your your bait's kind of standing out from a crowd there. Maybe that little bit of extra sound will help. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. That's just all experimental as well. So. Oh, yeah. Awesome. All right. Enough about power bait. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to get back to you. And also, if you have any questions later on, be sure to lay, lay it on in the chat, guys. What's up, uh, Constagio? Welcome, welcome. What's up, brother? Um, gulp juice, that works too. Gulp, yeah. yeah, gulp's pretty good too. All right. So bait and weight, just the real basic um, for anyone that's just wanting to learn and, you know, maybe you've done it and you haven't had success. Um, just some tips to get, get you a little bit more ideas um, to get bit. 
Um, let's jump into let's jump straight into mini jigs. Um, let's let's talk to me, Alfredo. You want to lead this one off? Um, you're pretty good with the jig, you know. I can yeah. I'm all right. <laughs> you're definitely jigging, guys. So yeah, before before you get to the jig, talk 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 us through your rod reel, um, what you throw. But um, aside from what you throw, recommendations for rod reel and line. So I mean, starting with the line, I think the line does play a big key to this. I would range from the two to four pound range, of course. And then uh, rods and reels. The reel, I don't think the reel makes the biggest difference. I think the rod does because the rod does a lot of the work. Uh, starting, like good starting rods would be like the Daiwa Spinatic, Daiwa Presso. Yeah. And then Definitely. those, probably those are the two of the hottest rods right now on the market. And then uh, if you want to go up a step above, you got the Californian, the, I think it's a, was it? FTX, RTX, I can't remember. Yeah, the they're the ones that sell Turners. They sell my Turners. They sell my Turners and stuff. Yeah. Those are really good rods. And, and then, then we can jump on the We can jump on Phoenix. And there's a few Phoenix. rods companies we got. We'll explain um, those. I'm going to give you a chance to talk about that in a second. Okay, for sure. But um, so companies, and that's practical because it gives people who ha don't have a mini jig rod yeah. some ideas to mm -hmm. do. But what about uh, rod specs? So line and lure rating and action. What are we looking for? I'd say line. I'd say one to four pound rod. One, one to four, four pound, pound rod. rod for mini jigs. What do you think for lures? Uh, I'd probably go anything down to one sixty fourth to um, maybe one eighth yeah. would be a good round for, for balancing for mini jigs. And then having that amount of spec, you have the like the ability to throw everything with that rod. Mm -hmm. exactly. So that's a good thing. And then uh, length, people vary preference, of yeah. course. But I've seen people jig with seven foot rods all the way up to nine foot rods. My right? preference is like anything seven six and above. Just because you get a little better action, but seven foot's definitely doable. Uh, I'd stick to seven six feet. You agree with that? Seven six to eight. Probably seven, that's probably seven six to eight foot is probably yeah. the best probably range the for best rods overall. Uh, Christian says Fenwick mm -hmm. Eagle isn't too bad either. Yeah, that's another Fenwick one you Eagle, use. Yeah, yeah I see you use that one. That one works really good. Yeah. And then I see Diego, of course, Diego. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Buddy? So <laughs> what's up, um, before I, before you guys go on, so Rod, uh, something between one to four. My Phoenix Dragonfly is a one to seven. Um, oh yeah, yeah. But a one to four. So, Anyway, really light. Um, yeah, like, very light. One, if one to one, something. If it's just one or two pound, you're probably in the clear. You kind of want something a little slower action as well. Yeah, because uh, what you're doing with that mini jig, and yeah, you know what? I'm trying to act like I know something. No, you do. Right? <laughs> no, he's so, good. Trust so, me. Uh, he doesn't <laughs> act like he is, but he's good. So, um, so yeah, so rod and then real, um, maybe like a 1K, anything 1K. Oh, yeah, 1K. Yeah, uh, 1,000 1, or, or 2,000. Yeah, I'd say 2,000 2, 2, 2. works fine as well. Okay. Yeah, you can use both, either of those. Okay, and then we've been, I've been learning a lot from Jordan about this one. Uh, I started off chop mini jigging with two pound Iser. Yeah. Um, and biggest claim to fame with two pound Iser, it has a breaking point of about four to five pounds. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's two pound. However, Jordan, is it okay if I talk about this? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Okay. Dude, so, throw it up there. I got so, it right here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so Jordan Jordan actually got me on uh, fishing four pound now. Yeah, so I use four um, pound. yeah it's the so J I floral. Use the J floral, either J floral samurai or J floral leader. Either way, you're good. So this diameter is almost exactly the same. Oh, you can see that. It's almost exactly the same as a two pound Iser. So the great thing about two pound Iser, it's, it's really strong. People strong. think it's strong for two pound, but it's not actually – two pound in essence. So the thing is when you get the diameters down in Japan, especially with a lot of fluorocarbons, the four pounds are actually the same diameter. So you're actually getting the same breaking strength as Iser. I'm just not claiming I'm using two pound basically. Like it's not, I'm just saying I'm using the four pound fluoro. So put it this way, if you guys decide to get two pound Samurai, you might want to up it to four because if you're used to Iser two pound, you're going to be breaking a lot more on regular actual two pound. So it's just press, it's just preference. And yeah. then one more key to this, and this might fall depending on how people are is the budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can buy six thousand yards of visor line exactly. for like twenty bucks, yeah. or you buy one two hundred yards for fifteen to twenty five bucks. So yeah. that's the other yeah. thing. And then that's what I ended up doing this season too was pushing up to four pound because I was just yeah. losing too many fish. Yeah, yeah. 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 two pound was just not doing it. Yeah. So um, I know these guys use like a seven pound very boss braid backing. Um, I have like a ten pound four strand braid on. That's good. It's a good casting braid, um, but as light of a braid as possible if you're using backing mm -hmm. like a seven pound <clears throat> you know super light so usually i'm using like anywhere from you know i know phoenix makes some really good braids they make them three, what, three to five pound class seven, nine, seven. uh i know dial j braid makes a 10 pound that's pretty thin as long as you can get in that range and use a short leader that's pretty good as well i usually like you know anywhere five six foot leader just okay. so for the invisibility standpoint but you're going to get the sensitivity of the braid so that's just all preference as well braid you don't need it it's helps us a lot though yeah 
that, that was a that was a big thing I learned from Jordan uh, very very recently actually I didn't even think about two pound eyes the line diameter of two pound two pound eyes if the line diameter of two pound test is the same as a four pound fluoro then I would choose to use the four pound fluoro because it's the same line diameter so the thickness of the line is exactly the same plus it's fluoro so it has better abrasion resistance mm -hmm. and um, and it has uh, um, uh, light refraction yeah so, so it's it's more invisible. So yeah. the fish can, I, I get confident in it if they can see it and they can't see it. So, yeah. So I, I, I'm sold. I learned a lot from there on that one. Yeah. That, that was really, really cool. Um, sorry. I ambushed the mini jig section. That was the beginning <laughs> for, um, <laughs> some, I don't know. For rod and reel. Um, I'm going to give it over. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's look at some questions yeah. and then we're going to give it to Alfredo for actual jigs and other, other things and, yeah. and techniques. All right. And you guys can both take that. Yeah. Let's look at these. Um, Okay, Jeff sat on says, do you ever use bobbers? Yes, yeah, bobbers, always, bobbers always carry them with you. We use the rattle bobbers. Uh, you can get those almost any tackle shop. I think who makes it? Mr. Crappie makes the green Mr. ones Crappie you can just get. Ones. Uh, so that's a, that's nice for when you want to get out deeper. You want to suspend your jig. It's really good. But only if you know they're out deep, then you really have to use it. You Most of the time, if they're in close, you don't have to use them. I found. Sometimes it's nice. But or if it's super, or if they're super finicky. Yeah, and then you can suspend it in their feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobbers, you can slow yeah. it down and yep, just switch. Sure um and then are, are we talking about I, you said it in a video so i think it's fine um the the bobber with the bobber also uh jordan it, and these guys they'll tip with uh with the newer, with the mealworm. mealworm or you know i know a lot of guys even tip with like little piece of carbon you know as long as you tip with something sometimes you get them to really react yeah it really works well good stuff and then um oh yeah brian pondo do you ever use braid with the leader yeah, with that's mini all i personally use that's all i think you personally use yeah. Yeah, we can cast out farther. You get less stretch. You get a way better connection to the fish. I suggest it. It's, you know, for the budget angler, though, it's definitely not for that. You know, it's not for the budget angler. Um, like I think Christian said, it's, you know, they have the six pound J braid. That's really good budget line to start off with. And then you can use the four pound. You, you can always go up or down and say it's, it's personal. Yeah. Gerard, if you're going to choose between a Luxor or Dragonfly for trout fishing, jigging mostly, which would you recommend? Um, I'll, I'll, these guys are very, very, they probably know Phoenix rods better than me, to be honest <laughs> with you. Um, but I have, so I'll, I'll start and then they finish. I have the dragonfly. I don't have the elixir. I fished the dragonfly. I've never fished the elixir. So I don't have the right kind of experience. I will say the dragonfly is very nice for jigging. Um, I suspect the feeling that I'm having right now, having fished with it for about a year is it's not perfect. It's great, but it's not perfect. And I don't know what exactly what it is. I need to fish other rods to kind of figure it out. So that's my thought, Gerard. Um, the, the Dragonfly is a very versatile rod. I'm happy with it. Um, oh, yeah, they're both great rods. It's hard to kind of pick one. But but if I were to stick to jigging with either, I, I'd probably go with the the Dragonfly, to be honest. Because the Dragonfly does have a little bit more width to it. Mm -hmm. And you have more uh, sensitivity on the top yeah, of the rod. It's a softer rod. Almost reminds me more of a fly rod. So you get fly that really exactly. slow action that gets the jig. Which but the Elixir is also good. Yeah, you can jig with the Elixir too. If you want more like connectivity to the jig, I feel like the Elixir you feel a little better. But yeah. I'd rather have the action. So I think the Dragonfly. The Dragonfly. Probably okay. for, main, for mainly jigging, Dragonfly. Yeah, Dragonfly. Sure. All right. Just FYI, guys. Um, I think this live is going to go longer than an hour. Are, are you guys okay with that? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, we, we, we have a lot to co cover. So I think it's going to go a little over. It's already 540 and we haven't even gotten tactical cool jigging. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, um, but it's I, I really want th – the reason for that is because I really want to cover some things. Um, Jordan um, is actually a pro staff for a rod company. So I wanted to give him a chance to talk about – um, the rods that he's a pro staff for, and you guys know I'm a Phoenix pro staff, but Hey, it's all about, it's all about love and support here. Yes, sir, it doesn't matter. Is. And it's, it's what works for you. Mm -hmm. So, um, but Jordan, again, like I said, um, has a lot of knowledge. Um, and so I want to give him a chance to talk about the rods. Oh, let, me go, let me go get those rods there. Up in okay. The front. You want to grab yours too? Yeah. We'll both talk about our yeah. Let's, let's look about, um, right. Gerard, hopefully that answered your question. Um, hey, you guys, real quick. Um, have you, Yo Speed 33D, have you all tried the Seaguar Purple Braid? I have not. Do they make, if they make it the light test, let me know. I might want to try it. I'm always up to trying any new lines. So. Okay. Um, yeah. What about Power Pro, Yo Speed ass? Power Pro makes a decent line. They make a decent good. line, but it's a little bit too stiff for me sometimes out of the package. So it does take a minute to break in. All right. The ceiling. <laughs> and then uh, Patera, what's up, brother? 
Dominic asks, um, how much braid backing do you guys put on your reel? So um, generally speaking, however much will fit yeah, for me. Yeah, it depends yeah. on the It on depends the on the deep, yeah, the depth of the spool. Depth. Some of the reels that are really deep, so I have to put like a lot on there. But it yeah. definitely, yeah, you got to kind of budget it. Yeah, and then, um, so Dominic, yeah, just it's the same thing as surf fishing, brother. You put on the braid backing, and then you put that short leader on yes. uh, with whatever Perfect. connection that yep. you like. Funny. Yeah. Um, Brian Pondo, what knot do you tie? Um, I only know like three knots. Yeah, so I tie the I'm going to be that one weird guy. Uh, yeah. I throw an FG, dude. I know like people are like, why do you hate yourself? Um, because that's the one knot I learned to tie when I looked online for strongest braid knot. So for every type of fish, I'll throw the FG. Even yeah. on this little tiny stuff, it takes me forever. And then what I'm about, what about um, for just tying on your lures? What's your oh, Palomar. 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 Old school, yeah. dude. Palomar. So yeah, yeah. Palomar. I, I'm Palomar. And then when it's not convenient for the Palomar, I just use improved Fish clinch. Oh, yeah. 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 If, yeah. If it's yeah. too quick, yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Um, Mirage. Oh, Tim Tim, Tim yeah. says Mirage, Mirage another good for jigs. Too. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a good variety. Uh-huh. Um, Patera, sorry, I just joined. Did you all go over hook size for trout with worms? I use size four for medium worms. I like Jaybird six pound. Um, it can handle my knots. Uh, Patera, um, we did talk about hook size, but it was more for power baiting. And uh, we recommend any like really, really small. And yeah. I stand by that too. Size 10 to 14. Um, whether that be, um, but I don't know if that applies for worms. As in worms, like night crawlers. Night crawlers? I, I would go eights. I eights, go eights. Are, eights are fine. Night especially crawlers. if you're inflating them. Yeah. Okay. Crawlers are go eights. Eights are fine. Yeah. So we we err on the side of smaller, but what works for you. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we would recommend. Um, Gerard, yes, thank you so much. You guys are legends. No, well, these guys are. You don't see well. We can get along with legends, man. No. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. We got through the questions. Cool. Um, they, they want to show their setups a little bit. Um, so uh, we'll start with Jordan, go with Alfredo, so and then yeah. Just full disclaimer, I am sponsored by this company, but I don't fish anything that I'm not 100% into. So I fish for Semper Fish Rods. So they, they make uh, trout rods that they're all pure graphite. So they're going to be way more sensitive than your average, you know, rod with just graph, you know, graphite and glass. So this rod's going to be a lot more sensitive, but a little bit more like it's going to be, you know, nice and soft. It's going to be perfect for the jig. I like this one for jig and spoon. So we make, a, uh, two, we make a few different series. So the one rod tip we make is uh, called a one tip and we make a two tip and we make all the way up to four tips as well. So what we can do is one rod, basically if you switch the tips, can do four different things. You can make four different rods out of one. So this tip right here is gonna be a two tip. So this is my favorite all around. You wanna throw anything on this rod for trout, it'll handle it for the most part. Uh, the one tip is really good for just jigs. I really like for jigs, but for throwing everything that we're gonna mention in this video, Stick to the two tips, that's for sure. These things have carbon fiber handles on them, so they're super slick, super sensitive, super light. I can fish it all day, and I just love it. And the sensitivity on this thing with the special braid is immaculate. And then I pair that up with the uh, Dio Exist 2000. This is a, it's a pretty pretty high-end <laughs> reel for it. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah we, we throw some pretty high-end reels, but uh, you can get away with a lot of the more budget reels as well. Uh, well um, if I bought that reel, I'd be sleeping here. <laughs> in, in my yeah. garage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you can go like anywhere from like, uh, I, I, you know, I like the Fuego. I think the Fuego is a very, very good reel. I know a lot of people would throw the Fuego. You can throw the... Uh, you can throw almost any, even if you're Shimano guy, you can throw Shimano. It's really just up to you, man. It's all personal preference in the end. Awesome, man. Yeah, I love your setup. <laughs> uh, thanks for sharing. Uh, be sure you message uh, Jordan, Jordan Horita Fishing. Yeah. Uh, let me put that down. Yeah, Jordan yeah, Horita Fishing on, uh, Instagram, on Instagram. Now, uh, Instagram. <laughs> this guy is like, one exists. Messaging for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't need an exist. Yeah. This is, you don't need it. But since I love fishing so much, and that's what I put my money into, it's like buying nice car. You, know? you don't need right. it, but it makes everything so much nicer. All right. Um, and then let's go to Alfredo. So my preference jig setup is going to also be a, it's going to be a Semper Fish. This is a custom. So it is. it does not have the carbon handle, but it does have the cork handle. I do have it paired with uh shimano stella and then i have line wise this is five pound phoenix braid but i did take his advice on the two tip no knowing, knowing that i was going to use this rod for everything mm -hmm. and then my dad has a matching rod but the two tip has always worked for me and then my other centers i do have are one tips yeah. okay and those are mainly like a spoon rod to even like drop shot got rod. it got it but yeah Semfer makes probably an I would say, in my opinion, a top five rod. Yeah. Okay. It's definitely, it's definitely it's yeah. up there. I wouldn't fish okay. it. Yeah, I understand I'm sponsored by them, but I would not fish them 
unless I truly believe in them. They are absolutely stellar rods, and I think they attribute to a lot of my fish catches. I once I, I was fishing a lot of other rods before, and they were great, but this rod has totally changed the game for yeah. me. It comes out of sensitivity and just overall feel. Even being changed. comfortable with like you get, like there's always those like every fisherman's different. They have their preferences. Yep. Where they're comfortable at. Yeah. This has been that rod where I'm just like. I haven't had an issue with I have there's I'm happy, happy with it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't fail on me yet. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Awesome. Let's not say yet, but yeah. I love these rods. Yeah, so man. yeah, so you guys, so you know, sky's the limit when it comes to gear, but uh when you're choosing your gear, kind of like Gerard was asking in the question, uh for mini jigging, uh rod is very, very important. Um and and the range is you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money if you don't have the budget. Um, but the right rod specs, one pound to about seven pound, one one to five pound test, one to five, yeah. rated one to five pound test, and uh, rated what's what's the smallest weight, 164? Yeah. Rod rated to throw a 164 to about one eighth mm -hmm. um, on the rod. Just follow those specs. Um, probably a fast action, right? Yeah, I'd say fast action. Yeah. You know, moderate fast to fast is always going to be your best. Yeah. Point. So anything within that range. It's probably going to do an okay job, but you got to pay attention to those specs. So uh, we all have the things that we like to use. Oh, yeah. and, Everybody's different when it comes down to it. Yeah. But once you find your niche, stick to it. Yeah. You'll be more comfortable, and you'll really get into the uh, whole fishing. Just get trout fishing way better. Yeah. yeah. But thank you so much for sharing about Semper. Yeah, and um, I so we sell blanks online right now. We're not ready with our new rods. We're updating those actually. So uh, we'll just take a look online. We're on, on Instagram as well. So take a look. Uh, I don't think you guys will be disappointed there. They'll change your game up. I guarantee. You um jeff um well um uh, for a link to the rod um i don't know if there's a website there is a website i just looked yeah, up if you look up yeah and they have an instagram just semper fish rod so S -E -E -R. yeah and again yeah and again if you have any questions for jordan um you can message him directly too i hope you don't get slammed tonight i'm sorry <laughs> hey, 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 but i'm um, more than happy to answer questions about whatever you guys need to just message me if i don't get back to i fall asleep early yeah i'm not gonna lie Patera, so, uh, I'll get back to you guys tomorrow. Patera says, how is the second tip stored? Okay, so it's not second tip. So you choose, all the butt sections are basically the same action. So you're choosing between one you know, one tip and four tips. So you can you can buy two tips. That's what I did on my custom I have here. I bought a one tip and a two tip. Had them both wrapped in the exact same spacing and everything else. That way I have a one tip for just throwing jigs. And then a two tip I can take out if I want to throw anything from, you know, bait, spoon, whatever else. Exactly. So... You buy a tip that would come, you know, corresponds to you, and then you can buy other tips later and then kind of switch them out. So. All right. Yo Speed says, um, my friend has a budget around 100, 150 and wants to get into trout fishing. Do you know any rods and reels that can be total of that price point? Oh, yeah. um, Christian's jumping in. Yeah, and I, I, That's probably my preference for a combo right there. Thank you, Perfect. Christian. Yeah. yeah. Join that's us right. next time, brother. Yeah, what's up? Um, <laughs> Daiwa Presso with a Crossfire. Yeah. Um, Crossfire LT is probably one of our most popular sellers for the light, you know, like the cheaper reels. They're pretty amazing. They actually surprised me. I mean, I fish and exist, but I gotta say these things are smooth for the money. Yeah. Like you want to get into it, dude. That's you budget get real quick. Yeah. yeah. Budget real, great option. Perfect. Absolutely. Um, sorry guys, I'm trying to get through all this because there's so much we have to cover. Um, Dice Tim, Tim, yeah, Tim is one of the funniest guys. Yeah. Um, things I have a presso and I have looked into questions for this suggestion. Daiwa, Timothy Fam, Daiso. <laughs> okay, jigging. So we have the gear. That one. <laughs> um, talk about jigs. Uh, just run with it. I mean, there's a lot when it comes to jigs. I mean, there's all these companies. I mean, we'll throw some out there. We got Ultralight Heavyweights, Gordito's Customs, Swiggin' and Jiggin'. We got Get Bet Customs. There's a bunch of companies, of course, and then there's always these companies that put in their hard work and make yeah. boxes like these. This is Gordito's Customs. Go ahead. Keep talking. I'm just going to show. Yeah, I mean, and people – I think the clip's right here. And everybody makes a great bait, of course. I mean, but when it comes to jigging, there's always – the good thing with jigs, there's a variety of colors you can throw, of course. Always a different application, size, colors. And that's what you like to have in your – I think that's a good key to have in your box is having the variety of baits. Because the fish can be locked onto one color. Yeah. And it just – I've seen that. And then it's just – from there, it's just – it's game from there. You yeah. Know? And then that, that's the good thing with having these two. You're able to try new things. See what they're wanting and what they want to eat, and then pretty much hope yeah. for the best for that bite right there. And that's one of the reasons that that's one of the things I've noticed from these guys. Um, that's why I say that they're good fishermen. Is even with the stock trout fishing, it's all about adjustments, man. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there are the days you show up and you catch fifty fish without having to change anything, but those are rare. Yeah. Um, there are times when it's really finicky, and these guys make adjustments so fast. So color choice, sometimes they're keyed in on the yellow, but sometimes they're keyed in on the dark color. They make a change in literally two seconds. Yeah. It's, it's really weird. Sometimes yeah. they'll be on a bait for an hour, 
and they won't touch it. And then you have to switch colors or eights yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So um, tell, tell us some basics, um, at, like jig heads. Show us some jig yeah. heads. Yeah. So for jig heads, uh, there's also a lot of companies out there that make them. Our preference, uh, our preference is going to be my buddy uh, Brian, the lead plug on Instagram. Yep. He yep. makes great lead, and then he uses uh, owner hooks. Uh -huh. But we like to change the variety up to – this is a 116th ounce uh, J hook, just a regular one. And then we would go all the way down to the 132. I'm going to see if I can show the head on that one. Yeah, it's tiny. Small. It's so small. Little head. Like 132nd. That. Yeah. That's and then uh, 160, you can go all the way out down to like a 164th when the fish are just lock jawed and then they just something small. I mean, you can always change it up. But Lead Plug is one of the, the guys that always even has taken care of our crew with hooks and stuff. And yeah, he's definitely us. the guy I recommend no matter what. Yeah. He's, he's some good guys for sure. And then hooks. I know Eagle Claw makes hooks. Uh, who else makes jig hooks? That Mustad makes some. Oh, Mustad uh, makes some. Gamma 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 yeah. So, but the ones that we prefer uh, use owner. I use an owner. Use owner. They're just nice, fine wire to me. Don't really break off them. So pretty, pretty but, solid. Yeah. One sixty fourth, all the way up to one thirty two. Even one sixteenth, you can fish a mini jig with for sure. Um, jigging techniques. Uh, we got regular, just straight jig. We got bobber jig. I even see people drop shot mini jigs, as in just oh. hook the mini jig itself. Yeah, oh. see that yeah it's, it's weird, yeah. but technique wise, there's always uh, there's always different ways to fish it. You're you're able able to fish it in the middle of the water column. Yeah, that's the, the good thing with the jig too. And then sometimes the fish even like them when you drag them on the floor. Yeah, like you're just dragging it, and then you just want to pick it up. Yeah, for sure. Um, can you? Is there like a cadence that you recommend? Like for people who've never mini jig before, what is it? The standard. And also, just to clarify, would you say, because all I ever use is 130 second heads, would you say that's kind of the standard 130 yeah, second heads? And then adjusting from up the and down. main one you're going to use. Yeah. Okay. And then you adjust, you adjust the depending on depth. Or yeah, exactly. And then that's the one, I, as in technique wise, when fishing a jig is you got to find where the fish are sitting at, as in like the water column, and then how deep you're fishing. Okay. Because you always have to take in like consideration of how deep my jig has to sink before I start even reeling. Mm -hmm. But then uh, technique-wise, it's always best to have, like, a slow retrieve and allowing the rod to do the work. Okay. Letting the rod just bounce and have the mini jig just, you know, kind of swim you're through the water. You're it in the water. Yeah, you just bounce the tip you know, up and down. Usually I put my finger on the blank to get better feel. But if you kind of shake it, just, you know, the rhythmic motion with your wrist, you can kind of get the jig to dance, do what you want. Got it. Um, okay, that's mini jigs. Um, if you guys have any questions on mini jigs um, – let us know. Let's see. What is the best fish for protein? Oh, I can answer that one. Uh, tuna. Does all mini jig? Oh, that's all me. Mini jigs. Uh oh. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then, uh, Here's the one I saw. And I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. Um, Marabou jigs. Actually, that's a good question. So yes, like on occasion we do. There's a lot of good companies out there. Uh, Drop jigs, jigs makes one. Uh, they make like hair jigs. Y'all tip the jigs with anything? Timothy. Right? Um, depends. <laughs> depends. Uh, Usually meal worms is one. And then I've seen people actually start this as the, the crappie niblets. Yeah, or like the little nibbles. pellets that yeah. you just oh. tip them on. It's been kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. The white one. Everybody's been throwing the white ball one. Ball head, yeah. which is regular jig. Okay, ball head's a little different. Ball head, you're going to throw with a lot of other baits. Usually it doesn't fit the tube. So I kind of recommend the tube head, obviously, because it just kind of sinks in. Yeah, it sinks in better. Ball heads for more like other stuff. We'll talk about that later. What minnows, and minnows, worms, and worms and yeah, that, stuff worms. like that. Yeah, cool. And that's Francis. He he's my yeah, buddy. yeah, yeah. We saw that Okay, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, dude, they like that zaza. <laughs> Tim, Tim, <laughs> she like that zaza. Tim, Tim was Tim was thinking setting yeah. that up. He's like, he was, do you guys tip it? it do you guys yeah. tip it with anything else? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, don't it. They're not saying. Yeah, he got me on shrimp it's last weird. time. I was like, no way, it's gonna work. And then I put a piece of shrimp on. Guess what? It works. So, <laughs> fish like me, dude. I don't know shrimp. Has to, has to be that. Has to be that Asian store market though. That's oh, the only mop for us. So that's just the best. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <man. clears throat> so yeah, I would say uh, someone that's been doing it for a couple years. Um, my advice to anyone that's starting out with mini jigging is, you just got to get out there and put some time on the water and. Um, and just work on the technique. And once you get bit, re keep doing what you were doing. Yep. And then every day is different. Every time you go out, the cadence colors can be a little different. The color is different. Um, and then, yeah, for me, one thing that I've seen is when it's slow and finicky, that's when I see these guys put bobbers on. Um, a lot of times, um, I'll see them flip a bobber on, tip it, um, just to get a bite, you know, because yeah. we're just... Always keep changing. If they're not biting, they're not biting your stuff, they're not going to bite it. So you yeah. got to keep changing. Keep changing. And that's the, like, back to what we were saying earlier. 
having that color variety is, this is, a, key. This is not for this is not for small bass, Diego. But I'll teach you how to do that later eventually if you ever get a license and decide to fish. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, uh, P Patera caught a trout on a mackerel at Jennings. Yes, so it is possible. I've caught ma I've caught a trout on sardines at one of the local parks fishing for catfish, and they still had some trout in. So it's possible. Um, not my first choice, but it is possible. <laughs> I went to Clark Regional hoping they would stop. Too. All right. So same thing as all the other lakes. Try back tomorrow or Friday. Yep. Um, tomorrow or Friday. Yeah. Tomorrow or Friday for sure. Yeah. So yeah, just, just to let you know, um, you know, we don't have any secret information as to when they're stocking. Uh, Alfredo, Alfredo was um, was at one of the local parks this morning at 7 a.m. hoping they would come. And that's how we find out when they stock because uh, we just try to figure it out, you know, so. Um, general question, surf fishing, trout fishing, et cetera, fishing in the rain. If you don't mind the rain, do fish still bite? Uh, I'll, I'll start and then I'll let them jump in. Uh, yeah, I've had, I've actually had some wide open fishing days in the rain. Um, even for surf fishing, um, in theory though, the rain could make the water dirty and it can knock, knock things up, especially after it rains. Um, I don't know if anything happens with the pressure, barometric pressure changing. Um, so, uh, do fish still bite? Yes. yes. Uh, does it guarantee it? Not necessarily. No. So it just depends. Sorry, that's yes. the extent yeah. of my answer. But, let, let but fishing in the rain, it, it kind of does. I think it, it does get sometimes spark a bite. Why, why them up? Yeah. I mean, yeah. but even sometimes the rain even benefits it sometimes because it kills the crowds. Yeah, yeah. Less people in the exact way. So well, less pressure means more fish. Less Free pressure, technique. more more chance of you getting bit, of course. And then the way my dad told me is. Fish are in the water already. The rain's not going to yeah. affect them almost, you know? Yeah. Like, they're already in the Something water. Something does for a bite. That one day at Ralph where the rain kicked up, I don't uh, know if it simulated feeding Chris, or it was what. Like, yeah, it was yeah. Christmas Eve. It was like Christmas Eve, Eve and it started raining, I mean, pouring on us. And all of a sudden the bite picked up. So it could be yes or no. I, I'll fish in the rain because why not? <laughs> fish when you can. <laughs> uh, Patera rooster tails. Yeah. It's a, tried, okay. tried and true. Yeah. Definitely, Bruce. We'll Absolutely. Get into that Absolutely. Yeah, we're yeah. we're getting to it. I promise. Yeah. Uh, the fun part. Um, Gabriel de la Trinidad. Uh, do you guys have any recommended lakes? We're from Orange County, but so we'll fish all the OC lakes. We fish OC up and down, though. Yeah. Yeah. We I mean, and then our counties do have our uh, post on their website. Yeah. Well, lakes. Yeah. We get stock, so it's not like it's like a mystery to go each lake. You know. Yeah. They always provide you with information. Of fish. Silverwood again. I do not. You have to look on the DMG website. I just kind of follow some of the Instagrams that they have. Tackle Once Express. they post, I know the next day I'm going to hopefully go out. Tackle, <laughs> Tackle Express Tackle posts Express for a lot. Um, Silverwood, Castaic. Silverwood, Castaic. They all post their own, so they'll let you know when the fish are in. Time of the day, that is ideal. Time of the day. Morning. morning. I'd say early morning, yeah. Morning, lunch. <laughs> morning, lunch, yeah. And then I think sometimes the best bites for trout come in sunset. Yeah. Sunset. I always, right to, I always try to think, like, how are they fed at the hatchery? So I'm thinking, man, if this guy's out there doing a nine to five job, he's feeding him when he gets there. He's feeding him after his lunch and he's feeding him before he goes home. So yeah. I'm thinking that's when they're kind of, you know, like. Try to, try to weird though, dude. Like yeah. um, sometimes the light, like it's dead and then the light switch goes on. Yeah. And yeah. It just goes, it, and it might be like two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. But you know. I've had good day bites at like one o'clock in the afternoon doing nothing. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. Um, but okay, let's, oh man, it's already six. Okay. Let's get to the fun part. Um, let's talk about spoons. Okay. Is that cool? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so spoons have become kind of like a little bit all the rage. I um, start off throwing cast masters. And uh, if you're throwing them at the local ponds, one eighth ounce. And honestly, like as much as there's all this other stuff going around, um, it's not a bad idea to have one of these. Um, it'll still get bit. But um, tell us about spoons. Spoons. I was introduced to spoons actually last season with Jordan. His uh, we were fishing. Was it Hemet? No, oh, uh, yeah, Hemet. Hemet, Hemet your dad Ralph. gave me one spoon, yeah, and, Ralph. Was, yeah. and uh, I feel like having a spoon or some side of uh, some type of spinner in your box is a huge key. Yeah. That that change in, in presentation can spark the trout to bite. And then there's been days where people are all jigging or throwing or the fly guys are out there, and the spoon's only getting bit. Because I think jigs have become really mainstream now to the point where everybody's throwing them. It's nice to have something different, so spoons. You know, they're, they're going a lot more mainstream now. Uh, they were always a big thing in other countries, but now here they're just huge. Uh, it's just become way just – it's a rage basically yeah. now. It's, it'll get bigger soon, true, trust me, especially with a lot of smaller companies coming out making that and buying baits and, and selling them. So. Yeah. So um, in terms of spoons, um, it seems like that the local parks 
uh, at least in Orange County. I don't know what the lakes are like down in San Diego. I know some of you guys are down in SD. Um, smaller ponds, like if you see in my videos, like Yorba, Irvine, those are all small, small ponds. Uh, 2.8 grams seems to be a sweet spot. Super yeah. light, but you can still fling it out decently um, to, to where the fish are. Yeah. Um, so uh, 2.8 grams. And then per Jordan's recommendation, I always do whatever Jordan tells me. Um, <laughs> Bigger lakes, um, like, you know, Fin and Feather. Um, five, and we even go up to a seven gram. Five to seven gram. Yeah, we'll throw up um, heavier baits. It just really depends on the lake you're fishing but and, and the time. But that 2.8 to three pound, three, three gram is usually what I throw at these lakes. One to, one to three grams stay there. Because sometimes they're shallow. They want that one gram jig, but that, that would definitely work. For yeah, sure. Or one gram and a spoon. I switch. <laughs> no, <it's not> <laughs> I saw that I started laughing. Uh, so, yeah. But uh yeah, it definitely you know keep to the one gram the spoons and then there's always different companies, of course. You got like uh Fisherman's Axis has a good variety. Yeah, of I think Fisherman's Axis is a good place to do it. They what import they have? Uh they have a lot of the Smith ones. So mainly Smiths. what we're using is a lot of the Japanese domestic market spoons. So they're the ones who really pioneered the whole different spoon game. So uh, sure. Fisherman's Axis has a really good selection. They import them, so you can get Smith. Um, there's Volcane. There's what four? There's a whole bunch. Jack will make some. Uh, there's a bunch of different ones. Rodeo Craft. You can kind of look and see which ones you like. There's not really a right or wrong answer. Um, it's nice. I have like a you pass my spoon wallet. Yeah. I actually have a spoon wallet filled with spoons. Keep that in your pocket when you're fishing. Yes, I do. <laughs> so <laughs> just filled with every color in the rainbow, dude. Just look at that. It's just double filled. And it has every brand you can imagine. So you can throw just any really color. It's just all situational. Same thing with jigs. If they're not biting a bright color, throw a dark color. And not throwing the dark color, throw something shiny. You know, you just got to keep switching up. And there's really no right or wrong answer for what type of spoon you throw. Um, you just got to put time and money into it. And, and, and it just, it's just kind of how – it's just confidence. It's 99% confidence. So. My yeah. Dad, my dad has a um, CG, um, I'm going to jump into this just – Give it a little quick talk. Um, CG asks small jerks. Um, this is the Lucky Craft. This is the Pointer S. I think this is the Pointer S. It's um, po Pointer 50 S. I'm sorry. It's the Pointer 50. So um, it's not a comp, you know, it's a confidence thing for me in the surf, but man, I'm trying to figure this thing out the ponds. But the ponds I've been fishing are so shallow. It's, it's, it's Yeah, you get in the weeds. <laughs> yeah, these are sinking. Um, I have a Pointer 65, which is a little bigger, um, and it's suspending. But I, w I wish I could find like a 50 or even smaller than 50 that suspends um, from LC. But I think there's there's probably other companies with small cranks that are just that as well. But do they work? Yes. Crankbaits are a thing. Yeah, right? crankbaits yeah, are crankbait. a thing. I've caught fish on the – I've used a few of the Lucky Craft cranks, the JDM ones, but they're like small little cranks. Uh, same thing, you kind of fish them like the spoon, just reel them down, you pause them, kind of get them to react. Enjoy with the true Yeah, you got me <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I did pretty good. Uh, it wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad day at all. <laughs> all right, um, there's one more question I wanted to answer. Um, oh, what, what fishing line is good for mini jigging? So, Gabe, we talked about what fishing line is good for mini jigging. Uh, two to four. Two, two to four. four, four Ice yeah. line. Uh, I, what I would yeah. recommend, smoke or clear. Yeah, that's a good, always a good beginner line. That's and then if, yeah. uh, depending how, what application you fish, that's in braid or you're just mm -hmm. in that class where people buy the expensive line for a carbon. Yeah. Two to four pound for a carbon yeah. is always that's always ideal. Line that's always ideal. Got it. Okay. Jesus says, do you fish a spoon like a mini jig or steady retrieve? Steady, steady retrieve. retrieve. Yeah, you got to kind of vary the retrieve, right? Vary the retrieve yeah. and then uh, you got to focus on how deep you let it sink and then the speed. Yeah, because sometimes these fish like it when you're burning it in, or you're yet again dragging it, or just yeah. keeping it steady in front of their face where they're just gonna chase it, of course. Yeah, um, yeah. Alf one thing about Alfredo uh, when I was fishing with him, let you and Jordan said in one in my Silverwood video, it, you got to be in tune with the with the lure, in tune this. in with the spoon. Yeah. You want to feel the vibrations on your rod, and like Alfredo, we were fishing at Fin and Feather last year, and he was fishing with his eyes closed. He's like, yeah, man. <laughs> I got feel it. <laughs> it sounds weird, like you know, a joke. But, but it's like being, no. it's like having that Jedi sense, man. You can no, feel it, it helps. Yeah. You cut off all your that's, other senses, and you. So, um, but generally, just slow and steady. Slow and yep. steady. Slow and steady. That's why we use the sensitive rods. You can feel the if you feel and you're in tune with your gear, you can feel it. You can feel the spoon almost wobbling on your rod, and mm -hmm. it's like it's, it's Christian Gale. Yeah, Christian Gale. He gives the breakdown. Yeah, he Dude. gave another, He gave my basically my Christian. Can I make you moderator? Yeah, you want to moderate? <laughs> I'm having a hard time with this. Part of the screen, real quick. Yeah. Hey, what's up, right now? 
Uh, Julie, Julie Hernandez, what do you think about flying bubble? Another one. Uh, That's another, good. yeah, effective technique. Under the radar. Very under the radar. <laughs> Very under the radar. That's uh, not one that people throw, but yeah. if the fish are finicky and they're not moving fast and they just see it, it's kind of yeah. If you see the fly guys killing them at the park lakes and you have flies in your box, you want to throw them on your spinning rod, you can definitely do that. It is no doubt in my mind effective. I don't throw it as much as I should. Uh, I got a fly rod, so I'm trying to get used to it. I'm terrible at it, but I'm trying to get used to it. But it's definitely flying effective. Was effective. I even heard that works for bass. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've heard a lot. Yeah, I've heard a lot about that as well. Bubbler, yeah. The flying bubbler. Or yeah, uh -huh. that works. Awesome. Um, okay, so I we kind of flew through the spoon part, and mm -hmm. let's jump into. I wanted to give Alfredo a little bit uh, of a chance to talk about uh, old school technique that is oh, yeah. very much out there, but you show that one off. we don't we don't see this a lot at the parks. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's. Uh, I wanted to ask Alfredo because he just recently killed it um, with this at Yorba and uh, he was willing to share what he was doing. So, so tell us what it is. And so the technique that actually I'm going to give credit to my boy Dave. Okay. Uh, it's a split shot rig. As, it's the same as power bait, but it's even more finesse. Okay. And it's almost, uh, almost, I almost see it more effective than fishing power bait. And then uh, we can go back to the topic of bait fishing is uh size 14 hook and then uh, a small split shot okay of course like and then uh you can always have a variety of baits when yeah. you're throwing this rig so this this would be good yeah 14 perfect. yeah so this is a size for it's tiny guys size 14 mosquito hook and it's a split shot rig so tell us more about the rig and tell so us what you're doing my, my go-to bait that i do with this is going to be the white power worm. this is probably one of the most effective ways that I've caught fish when the bite when they have seen every spoon, every jig, and everybody's box. Split shot rig is the, just the way to go, and then uh, way sufficient. You can uh, just have it beta weight, of course, and then the other one would be uh, almost fishing like a mini jig. Mm -hmm. Dave uh, showed me the example where if you have a long enough leader, and we fish this with any leader from three to four feet, okay, sometimes, and then you have the ability to bring in the weight with you and fish it like a mini jig, and the worm is just gonna follow the whole time, okay. So um, it's a long leader, three to four feet, uh, split shot. What size split shot? Small, 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 yeah. small split shot. Small split shot. So the idea, I'm going to ask you to rig one of these up. Um, so it's a power worm. So the idea with the power worm is the power worm floats, obviously. You put a split shot on your line, four pound test. Four to two, yeah. Two, to, two to four pound test. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta. Oh, you already got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for tomorrow. You're ready. You're ready. <laughs> so pretty much, I mean, you'll have your split shot on, but I don't even know if it'll, ca oh, it'll catch the hook. Yeah. Size 14 hook right there, and that's how pretty much the way I hook it. And then you can even hook it wacky rig. Yeah, wacky rig is also very effective. But this is the way to that I've just seen that just never get, always gets bit. Yeah, no matter how pressured the fish are, the fish are eventually gonna have to eat. And then the split shot rig has always worked. And then uh, different applications are the pinch crawler has been another one that's been working for us too. And then you can just go back to a classic glow in the dark mice tail. Yeah, that's always hot. That always works. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea behind the split shot rig is like, like Alfredo mentioned, just like the Carolina rig, um, you cast it out the long leader, the line's going to float, line's going to float. So the worm's going to float and then at, you can slow retrieve it or pop it. And as you move it in, the worm's going to drop and then it's going to rise again. And then even in the ponds, there's water movement. So that thing's just fluttering. Same, it's the same reason why mice tails get bit. You exactly. just fade and wait. It's just, it it's doing that and the tail's going exactly. like that. Right? Yep. So it, it's a it's a killer technique that not that many people use, but definitely when it's slow, it, it's slow. that's yeah. what you want to do to whack them. And that was it actually happened to us the day at Yorba. Mm -hmm. and it was actually three days after the stock. There was still a bunch of people fishing jigs and spoons, and I just went screw it. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it. Yeah. And next thing you know, it was pretty much like every cast because it, it was just a different application that you weren't seeing. Yeah. So they were gonna they were gonna bite. They were so gonna have to bite. It's more subtle than just a jig bounce. And that's face. finesse. That I consider it more finesse than. A mini jig, yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. So, um, so split shot rig, don't sleep on that. And then, uh, can we talk about minnows and uh, ways to fish minnows? And yeah, I got to do this uh, for. You have minnows? I do not. I do. Oh, you, you have minnows? Okay, I was. Yeah. Just, I, I didn't. I didn't have minnows. Sorry, but yeah. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Nail Them Baits. Um, oh, yeah. You know, Nail Them sent me this last year, and I haven't gotten a fish on camera with it yet. And so I, I feel so bad. So, but nailed them baits on Instagram. Um, great minnows, but um, these guys can take it from there. Grab one out of there. Yeah. Go for it. All right. So minnows. That's been the 
big rage too as well. A lot of people throw them just like, you know, jigs. Or what they were saying earlier, somebody said in the comments, you could throw a ball jig. Ball jig and fish is just like a mini jig, just a different look, different presentation, a little bit more subtle than seeing a bunch of tassels. Sometimes they want that, especially if the key didn't have a lake on shad or little minnows or whatever, that's going to be your ticket. You can also drop shot this. I saw drop shot mentioned. In yeah, the comments. The same. Yeah. yeah, drop shot works perfectly well, just just as well with the worm as well. That gives a little bit more action, suspends it in your face. We just think the split shot's going to be a little bit more subtle overall when it comes down a little bit. Yeah, and Jordan, um, again, it's all about the adjustments. So actually, like, a lot of times, for me, like, all I'm doing is throwing a spoon. Like, I'm, like, ride or die, dude. I'm either going to get hit with a spoon <laughs> or I'm going to skunk. Um, and that's kind of us, too, but um, kind of not at the same time. Jordan was at Pyramid last week. Yeah. And uh, you you killed it. So, yeah, Tell us how you did it. Got got twelve really quick on the on the spoon. It was really really good, and the bite died. So I started relaxing, taking it easy. I saw the fish still schooling up, and I go, you know what? Let's try a drop shot with a bigger weight to get out where they were. And the drop shot just sitting in front of them was doing the job. A split shot would have worked in that application as well. I just couldn't get out to them. So I thought a drop shot with a you know I think I was throwing a three sixteenth ounce weight. That was the heaviest I've ever thrown for drop shot was the ticket. And you just keep it in front of their face until you get bit. So that guy brought a good one. The okay. beetle spin, bro. Beetle I don't even spin. think people know about a beetle spin. Damn, that's old. Okay. Um. Yeah. The, I, they OG. work. They work. They do work. Crappie. Um, they work for everything. <laughs> that one beetle base. spin is another I one. I don't use them for trout as often. Uh, I don't think we both have one in our box right now. I don't have one in my box. But I know they that they're OGs. They do work. I used to catch fish all the time when I was a kid on them. So they do work. Yeah. yeah that's old school. <clears throat> yeah. So I think um, if we head out in the next couple of days, I, I'm going to try to catch it. I'm just telling you guys just to put it out there. I'm going to try to catch one on the middle. Right, no um, one, thir one 30 second ball head. Yeah. One 30 second ball head. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. So Irvine, Clark, what are the, where are the OC Park getting stopped this week? Irvine, Irvine Park, Irvine, Rob Irvine, Clark, Irvine, Lake, Clark, Irvine, Rob Lake, Clark. Lagoon, Niguel. Lagoon and Niguel. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to get stopped. Probably not a good time. Yeah. So, um, that's, I think we've covered almost everything, right? But yeah. Shout out to Nelvin Bates. Yeah. Good guys out there. Arden and Michael. Yeah. yeah they're cool. Both good, great fishermen, and they make an awesome bait. Yeah. yeah. So sure. I was messaging Michael today. Michael messaged me because um, he saw one of his minnows in my story. Yeah. And he said, that, that looks familiar. And I'm like, oh, I feel so bad. Like, he sent me this, and I still don't have one on film. <laughs> I feel we so bad. Them. Don't worry. They so, work. Uh, we'll vouch yeah, so They work really well. Nailed them, Bates, guys. Yeah. Um, take, take a look at them on Instagram as well. Yeah, dude. So I, I, I met my response to Michael was, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I haven't messaged you because I'm Wait, so shamed. Can't get everything on camera. <laughs> can't get everything on camera. We so can. we're going to make it happen. Um, Thank you, Jason. <laughs> yeah. So again, guys, um, that's we've kind of covered it. Normally, I keep my lives to about an hour, and it's been about an hour 10 since we started. So a pretty solid time. Um, so many different things. So if you have any questions, I'll leave them in the comments. We'll try to get to them. But um, more than anything, I hope to see you guys at the ponds. If you guys fish the local ponds, I'm sure you've seen these guys out there. <laughs> yeah, you've probably um, seen us once or twice. Yeah. Dude, stop by, say hello. Don't be. Don't um, but yeah, um, I, I'll I'll be, I think I'll be at Irvine this week. Um, yeah, whenever whenever tomorrow, they so. plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll work. I know, Jordan. Uh, I'll be out there Saturday, probably. Yeah. Uh, weekend warrior. But, but we'll be out there. And so um, if, if you see me, myself, or any of us, just say hello. And again, it's about working together and keeping positive. There was a comment earlier that I didn't get to respond to. Um, in the chat that was kind of talking about like it seems like super competitive and uh yeah and that's a, that's the thing man when it's, it is super crowded it gets super crowded especially on stock day the first couple of days after stock which is when you have to be there and so my whole thing is hey it's just stock trout guys i mean we all want to catch but at the end of the day it's just stock trout it's we're stock trout. we're here to have fun and work together and for me personally like i've had nothing but good vibes with the guys out there you know like in terms of just working together, communicating when when I make a bad cast, which I do every now and again, uh, I say, hey, I apologize, my fault, you know, and, um, you know, like not, you know, just communicating, yeah, working together. Hey, cool yeah, is it okay before you step into a spot? Hey, is it okay if I fish here? If they say no, then say no. It's a lot but, like party boat fishing. Like, yeah. It's like, it's like, yeah. It's like bank party boat fishing. Under yeah. and over, you're hooked up, go under people's lines. Just be, be courteous, you know? Always yeah. make sure if you can try to get them out of it, sometimes it happens, but if you can try to get them out of the tangle. <laughs> Christian says Saturday in the rain. Yeah. 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 You can join me. <laughs> rain jacket, rain jacket, rain jacket. Exactly. That's all you need. Yeah. And Michael, hey, Michael, what's up, brother? Um, exactly, man. It's it's just being respectful. Mm -hmm. And for me, like, um, if I am standing next to someone and they don't seem to like that I'm there, and but it's a hot bite, I'll leave. You know, like you can have the hot bite. It's okay. 
you know, because there'll be another hot bite later, you know, it's not just the one day. Right? Yeah. It's and so for me, bunch. but we all, we all want to catch the fish. So we're doing our best to find, find the hot bite, you know, and working together. And so, um, you know, just, just, um, you know, let's keep it positive together guys. And that's, what's one of the things that's really important with me about this channel is, um, uh, just, you know, having the right attitude and have the right, right energy and, um, best way to do it is, is just helping everybody out. You yeah. Know, if you see one guy struggling, give him the tip and yeah. we all, it's all good. Once everybody starts catching fish yeah. together, yeah. everybody's happy. Yeah. We want everyone to catch and, um, yeah. So at the end of the day, guys, uh, I think we're going to wrap it up. Let me see if there's any catch. Yeah. Let me see if there's any questions here. What's up all the catching? Catching trouble in mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that just happens sometimes. I don't know. Uh, Dominic, what is Alfredo and Jordan's Instagram? Um, uh, for Jordan, it's easy. Just type in Jordan Horita Fishing, yeah. guys. And yeah, then you're I'll find it. My complicated name. My first name, underscore <laughs> JR, and then underscore 7210. Gosh, Fredo? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So <laughs> I, I got to make it hard for people so they don't find me. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't find me? Yeah. Horita I'll find fishing. Me. Easy, easy, easy. Yeah, so I, I typed in their Instagrams, guys. So um, I, I know some of you guys are here because of them. And for those of you that want to throw some questions their way, you want to learn about um, this game, which is super fun. I didn't expect it two years ago to have this much fun. And um, now I have you guys in my house and uh, just grateful to share this time with you guys. And, um, but yeah, man, Hey, we're going to go ahead and call it guys. I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with us this evening. Um, if you have any other questions, hit me up and hit these guys up. We're happy to help. Um, but other than that, guys, uh, have a great week. Hope to see you guys at the ponds. Later, guys. Uh, and then the awkward end. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>